Ms. Ms. Harling. So Chelsea, can you please tell us uh, about a little bit feedback about the course so far? Um, same thing as Harleen. Um, it is, it is a little fast, um, and I'm keeping up. I hope, I, I hope, <laughs> I'm keeping up. Um, I also, I just, I think it's more the information for me. I just like um, all the information that is on there and that is being given. So, yes, that's it. Okay, thank you, thank you, Miss Chelsea. Uh, Ms. Madeleine, can you please help us with a little bit of feedback about the lecture itself, the structure, and how your learning process is? is um, uh, yeah, can you hear developed? me? Yes, very well. Okay. Um, well, I, I like reading, and um, it's, it is fast. It's a little dense. Um, I mean, the material, is, it's understandable, but it's, it's just fast. Um, but I like reading, so... I'm getting through it and I'm understanding it. Um, I'm not really confident that I will remember things and retain everything. There's a lot of information covered so far. Um, so we'll see, hopefully this review will help. Um, but I, I mean, personally, my style, I like to read um, and- uh, How's the structure, how the structure of the course in your opinion? It's fine. I'm, I mean, I told you earlier, uh, it's helpful to have the video and the PowerPoint and additional notes. Um, so there are different things uh, to reference. Um, and then as far as what we're covering, it's what I would expect. Um, I think it looks like we're going to cover a lot of different things, but um, the structure works for me. I mean, I do well with um, online structure. learning and kind of figuring it out myself. I think with any online platform, you kind of have to figure out the the format. There's a learning curve. Um, I think it will get easier for me uh, next week mm -hmm. and hopefully for everybody else too. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Thank you, thank you, Madeleine. Yeah. Uh, Brian, please, uh, your opinion, same question, please. Um, kind of agree with everybody, you know, very dense. We're covering all this material in three weeks um but the powerpoints help you know we could pause the videos and you know it is very dense but there's a lot of things that could help us out okay so you satisfied so far with the course or you want something changed something different okay no. everybody wants more time right <laughs> sorry no everything's good okay thank you thank you brian uh miss amanda please the same question yeah, um, it is super fast paced and I think there there is a lot of information to cover. Um, uh, but I really do like how organized everything is. It's like in different sections and you're able to easily navigate where to go. Um, the recordings are a plus. Same with the PowerPoint slides. So I really do like that. Thank you, Miss Amanda. Thank you, Miss Amanda. Uh, Miss Karina, please. Um, everything is very fast paced, but I like how I can follow along on the PowerPoints and Word documents with the YouTube video. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Thank you, Miss Karina. Thank you. Uh, Miss Ruby Ledesma, please. Your opinion, your feedback, please. Um, I'm satisfied overall with how the course is. I, I was expecting it to be fast paced, but overall, like, I, I like having the PowerPoints and the notes as well as your video. Um, I like how you come up with like scenarios or things to kind of help us break down like when on the first, I believe it was like the first um, lecture that you talked about referring to like the steps and stuff, like how to picture certain things to kind of like help us be able to grasp of what we're learning. So I, I really like, I'm appreciative of that. It helps kind of, into simpler terms, be able under, to understand what you're saying. Thank you, Miss Ruby. So fantastic. So you know, any any time, any question, any doubt. We, so we are ready, Miss Malou and I. We are ready to to help you as much as you we can as soon as possible. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Miss Denise. Please, Denise Gonzalez. The same question, please. Um. 
I kind of got here a little bit late. Can you repeat the question, please? Sure, sure, Denise. Of of course. So I just uh, I just want to have a small uh, feedback about the the course itself, the structure and the material, and how you are uh, actually engaged with the with the with the course. Oh, the I like it. At first, I was a little bit like overwhelmed, um, just because it is a lot. But um, over the days, I just um, it's not that bad. I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> <Not a lot>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I'm learning stuff I didn't know, so yeah. Okay, so that's that's wonderful. Okay, uh, Miss Malou, thank you so much, Denise. Well, very important information. I just uh, want to thank you, everyone, for your patience and for your um, efforts that you're doing every day. You know, the course the course is 16 days, right? The 16 days. So we are in day number six. So we have almost 10 more to run. And uh, yeah, you're almost there. So bit by bit, bit by bit, we have uh, two more weeks. And uh, uh, remember, this course is to you're going to build up the base of your career. So that is the importance of this of this EMB. This EMB, we make a lot of emphasis. All the teachers put our or put a lot of efforts in order to give you the best for this course, because this is the base. This is the base. It's like, I, I'm going to send you run a marathon without shoes, right? So I'm giving you shoes right now, <laughs> for example, right? So that is one, one thing. Second, okay, so now I'm I going to, Ms. Malou, with your permission, I'm going to mention what we expect for them for today and for uh, for the, uh, the coming weeks. And uh, we are going to clarify a few things about how it's going to be day six on our preparation. Number one, so why we are here? Why we are here? We are here because we are going to have the tutorial, the tutorial, the tutorial for the, uh, the, six, the five days that we had in the past. So you have probably uh, writing or in your mind, some questions you want to clarify. So this is the day that we have, we don't have homework today, right? That's a good news, right? We are resting from the homeworks and the homeworks are being made in order to reinforce the material that you get into your, into your uh, video and um, notes. All right, PowerPoint. So now let's go to the point. So today we have the review, and today we can, I said, listen, we can have the exam, the exam number one. Why I said we can? Because uh, you need to, we need to be here from four to 9 p.m., the five hours of tutorial, and that is going to be managed by Miss Malou. And then after that, at nine o'clock p.m., the exam will be open. The exam will be open at 9 p.m. tonight. But some of you are thinking, oh my God, after five hours doing tutorial, I need to take an exam of 50 questions or oh, I'm going to be exhausted. And you're right, you're right. So what we are doing here is that at nine o'clock, the exam will be open. And uh, it's going to be open until tomorrow, Sunday, until 11.59 p.m. That is the time that the exam one is going to get closed. So that means that you can take the exam after the, the, after the tutorial tonight or tomorrow morning or to no, tomorrow evening, afternoon evening. So you have time to do it. You okay with that? Any question about that? Okay, perfect. Number three, uh, I need to, uh, just a minute, just a minute, I have the record of all your, your average, average bonus points. So I'm going to give you the results. So obviously I can, I'm not going to give it one by one, right? Because it's personal, but I can give you the average of all the group. So how the group was doing in this, in this week. In this week, we have from out of five points, 
total that you can get, the whole group getting average 4.73 points. So that, that means that if you have 70%, you will have 74.73% per, percent more because we are going to add points to your to your exam number one. Be okay with that? We all right? Everybody understood that, please, or any any question? Move, move your head. Oh, you know what? You can move your head. You can do this. Thumbs up if you don't want to talk, right? Because when I say, oh, I talk, talk, nobody talk. I mean, I look like uh, I'm talking into the outer space. So that's fine. So thumbs up. Just help me with that, okay? Don't don't put me in the in the limbo. <laughs> All right. So let's keep going. So that is about today. So we have the tutorial, and you have the the the, the exam by tomorrow, or today or tomorrow. Whatever is actually good for you, whatever you feel comfortable. Okay, so in addition to that, uh, I notice that uh, some few students uh, are not getting, um, I mean, I want everybody to get advantage of the bonus points, okay? So if somebody have, uh, hello, who is Selena Rene? Hello, somebody was trying. Selena Rene, uh, I don't, who is this, please? Hello? Selena, can you, what is the name of the, I think that is your sister or your cousin, somebody, right? What is the, what is Selena Rene, uh, uh, real name? Let's put it that way. Selena, your microphone is off. Oh, Bianca, uh, Bushner, Bianca, uh, Miss Bianca. Uh, can you please call me? You have my phone number. Um, I somewhere, but if you give it to me, somewhere. Real quick, okay, that's right a good now. number. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So <laughs> I'm so I, sorry. I, I'm gonna turn off my video. I am. <laughs> uh, I need to talk to you. I need to okay. talk to you because I want to give you some um, some tips. Okay. So okay. can you call me uh, when I finish the, to talk? Just give me five minutes and we talk about that, okay? Yeah, yeah. What's your phone number, though, so that I can get it sure, down? Sure, okay. sure, sure. I got it here. Uh, it's 650-784-8486. Uh, it's on the uh, chat window. So, can you see that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I see it. Oh, Perfect. Oh, wait, wait. It's it. wrong. 7885 okay. So now it's that. 650 784 Got it, got it. Okay, I'll call you in five minutes on yeah, my phone, yeah. not when, on the meet. Okay. No, 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 no. No, you call me to my phone when I when I finish to talk. Okay. Because okay. I'm going to uh, give the the floor to Miss uh, Miss Cruz. Perfect. Okay. 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 All right. So perfect. So now, uh, please, uh, I want everybody to take advantage of the bonus points. Okay. Uh, basically, that that is about right. So if somebody I will tell you, please. Oh, by the way, one more, more, more thing. If that is possible, if that is possible, you guys, all of you, can share, can share your cell phones to like have a, a meeting, a chat meeting, a cell phone in your in your a group, a group chat, a chat group in your cell phone. If somebody can organize that, you know what? It's so useful. It's so useful. You can tell right right away the last. Gossip, no, no, we don't gossip. The last news are going to be run very fast, so you can tell what is going on on the on the on the group. Okay, if that is possible, I will suggest that you don't need to include me, right? So yeah, you know, so because you 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 want to have your group, no, having your teacher there, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so I guess we have one, two, three, four students who are not coming. I hope that they're coming later. And uh, I will uh, give the floor to Miss uh, Miss Cruz. Okay, so I need to welcome Miss Cruz. She's going to be together. We are here in this uh, this course. We are working in this course together. So I uh, I, I I'm sure uh, I'm sure that you will have a good time 
with her. She is a very wonderful person and very knowledgeable as well. So I want to thank you so much for her her participation and, and to be part of this of this important group. Okay, so all right, so thank you so much. So I will leave the floor to Miss uh, Miss Cruz and I will see you next few days. You know, I'm checking your grades every day. You know that, right? I'm checking and update your grades every day. And whatever, please, your emails, when I send email, answer the email. Yes, uh, San, uh, Harleen. Harleen? So, mm, I have a question. So, the bonus point is the practice questions, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, the practice questions, one more time, the practice questions are going to be open just just open just after just after you submit your homework your homework when it's submitted submitted you you have access the open doors and windows to get into the bonus questions so you get the bonus questions that is going to be added the maximum you can have a hundred percent yes that represents one point then tuesday another point and up to Friday, another point. So you have 5% more. And that is a very good deal. Very good deal. Okay? So take advantage of that. Don't miss it. It's going to help you. I can tell you. This is a very accelerate program. And uh, yeah, so we need to use our, all our tools. Okay? All right. Thank you so much. So uh, welcome and, and, and to EMB16. All right, see you then next time and contact me anytime you want. All right, gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. G. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Okay. Miss uh, Bushnell, uh, Bianca, please, if you have the opportunity to, to call me, please, okay? I'm going to close my microphone and I'm going to go out of the, of the, of the system. Miss Malou, uh, Miss Cruz, if, uh, if you need me, please just uh, uh, call me. Uh, I will uh, I will be alert uh, immediately. Yeah. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Okay. I just wanna do a quick because um, there were a few um, students that came in after we started. Um, Myra, my Myha, Bush. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, hey, uh, this is Bianca. And also, well, Bianca, we know, is here under Selena Renee. Um, who else came in later? Um, just want to double check. Um, Ruby, you are from the Fresno campus. Yes, your mic's off. Okay. And then Denise, you are from what campus? Concord. Concord. Harleen is already Fresno. Bryant. San Mateo. San Mateo. Um, well, she's Selena with Karina. Uh, Fresno. Okay. And then we have um, Madeline. San Mateo. San Mateo, okay. And Chelsea, are you still in with us? Yes, I'm here. San Mateo. San Mateo. Okay, we're missing one, two, I believe three students still. Okay. Um, just, um, I know you guys don't, um, but just as a, um, how do you call this? Um, for online classes, we do... First, uh, some rules. Um, turn off your mic when um, you're not speaking. Turn it on, of course, when you speak. Um, there's that button to do that in the screen. Um, also, that helps us um, with background noise. So um, if you have it off, um, the noise behind you or um, it's not going to be um, heard by everybody. And then secondly is um, having you um, online with us. So I would like that you um, turn your cameras on when we are um, online. Um, it's just a way for me to also see that you're with us in the class. And then 
you also are able to see your um, um, me and the classmates and whatever will be um, given. So um, I heard all that. Um, so is that clear um, for the group? OK, uh, I still see a few people not um, uh, focus, uh, on the camera. So if you can do that in the next uh, few minutes. OK, um, so we're just going, I'm not, uh, we're doing a tutorial for lectures one to six. It's not, um, I will just go over a um, few um, points um, for each lecture. Uh, the other thing is if you have questions, this is a time to ask. I will try my best to respond. If not, um, I will pull Dr. G um, into the class. Um, there's a few things we could do. Um, just uh, I'll put the lectures on the screen. We can review practice questions within the lecture. Um, and then again, like I said, if you have questions there, um, let me know. I can also give you um, highlights. I'm not sure if you if you had the chance to look at the um, um, midterm video of Dr. G in YouTube. Have you looked at that? It's a compilation of lectures, I believe one to seven. So he highlights again um, what needs to be reviewed and what could be, um, uh, what you could see in the um, quizzes or the, um, I, I, it's a midterm, it's midterm uh, quiz, but it would be in the quizzes. So when you get the chance, you can look at that um, video. It's in YouTube. Okay, so let me share my screen. So um, highlights for um, lecture one, which was the introduction to the whole um, EMB program, um, is basically the, uh, one of the highlights is this one. So for the organization of the human body, you have to remember that um, it starts with a cell. The cell is your, it's a unicellular. This is where um, everything starts. So from a cell to the tissue, to the organs, to your systems, and then to the multicellular organism. Okay. Um, you have read, you have come across, there are about 11 body systems that um, we will be, that you have reviewed on this first lecture, but you will see them as we move along um, in the class. So um, the systems include an integumentary system, which is your um, skin. This is the covering um, of the body. So it includes your skin, your hair, your nails, and your exocrine glands. You have your skeletal system, which is your bones and joints and whatever ligaments you have. Your muscular system um, with the name itself is your muscles. So we will be learning about the skeletal smooth cardiac muscles and the main function is movement. Um, what's important here is nervous system and endocrine system. These two systems um, are responsible for what we call homeostasis of the body or the balance in the body. Okay. Oh, just going through my notes. Um, so it, um, 
nervous system. It includes your brain, spinal cord, and other um, nerves that you have in the body. Endocrine is um, hormones and uh, having a hard time moving this, okay. Then you have your cardiovascular system, which is your heart and blood vessels. We know how important that, that is um, for the whole body, lymphatic system, respiratory, digestive, um, urinary, reproductive, okay? So just as a um, review, um, anybody can respond, um, just um, you can call out the answer. Um, the correct order of hierarchy of structures in the body is A. Can you see, the, you can see the screen, right? And you can uh, look at the answer. So which one is the correct order of hierarchy of structures in the body? Is it B? B, okay. Yeah, so it's the cells, the tissues, the organs, the organ, the, the organs and the systems. So we saw that in the first slide. The two, the body system that includes the skin is called C. Integumentary. And the body system that is composed of all the hormone producing glands responsible for growth and uh, regulation is E. e endocrine okay so um, everybody should be familiar with an anatomical position or position of reference so if you come across um, medical or nursing books this is uh, you will be seeing an anatomical position so it's standing erect facing directly forward your feet are pointed forward slightly apart and the hands are hanging down at the sides with palms facing forward. So um, you have to be familiar with um, this, um, uh, the body directions. So um, superior, which is above or higher than, Inferior is below or lower than. Um, please familiarize yourselves with this. This will come up a lot um, during your whole course. Um, anterior, posterior, anterior is in the front. Um, posterior is behind. Your ventral is towards the belly, dorsal opposite of ventral towards the back, um, and so on. You have medial, lateral. And then proximal is close to and distal is away from. And then the other one um, that is highlighted is the planes of division. So there are three planes of division um, in the body. Your frontal or coronal plane, this divides the body into the front and the back aspect or anterior and posterior, okay? Sagittal is when uh, the plane, it divides the body into the right and the left side. And then um, oblique is, um, a transverse is divides the body into superior and inferior aspects. And oblique, it's um, like the slanting. So um, that's how it looks. So which of the following is... Hold on, Dr. G is trying to, hold on please. Miss, Miss uh, Cruz, can I, yes. can I mention a little, it, it, so, can I take one minute? I forgot to mention something, please. Sure. Uh, please, everybody pay attention. Open eyes, open ears, very clear. Please, 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 okay? The exam, the exam one, the exam one is going to be 50 questions, 50 questions. Please remember this, you, is a sequential exam, 
is a sequ sequential exam. You have 70 minutes, seven zero minutes. So you have for 50 questions, you have 70 minutes, more than enough. Now, please, this is crucial, okay? Crucial. When you take the exam, you need to answer the question before pass to the next question. Why is that? Because if you go to the next question and you want to come back, you cannot. So it's just going forward, right? So it's going to be, I answer question one, and then I pass question two. So if I don't answer question one, I go to question two, and then I want to go back to question one, I cannot do that. Is that clear, Miss Amanda, is that clear? Miss Dennis, is that clear? Yes. Can Ms. you start is, is clear? Miss Maya, is clear? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, it's clear what I mentioned, please, about the exam. Yes, Dr. G. All right, thank I heard you. you. Thank, excellent. Chelsea, is clear, please? Yes, it's clear. Okay, Miss Karina, thank you, Chelsea. Miss Karina, yes. yes? It's clear. Excellent. Miss Ruby. Yes. Miss yes, uh, Chandler, excellent. Brian. Okay, excellent. Miss Harleen, is, is, is clear? Yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, you're going to thumbs up, okay. Uh, Madeline, is, is clear? Yes. Okay, and um, Bianca, is clear? Yes, I have a question, sir. Is yeah. it possible to, to begin the exam and then stop the exam? Like, no, or no? You, no, you have, you have 70 minutes. I understand. Once, once you open, it's running the time. The clock is running. Very good question, very good question. Got it. Okay. Okay, Miss Cruz. Sorry, I didn't want no, to interrupt you. No, 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 you. Sorry. no. Worries. I will see you soon. Okay, okay. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cruz. Okay. You're welcome. So, um, just another. So, the which of the following is incorrect about anatomical position? So, one thing you have to make sure you're looking at is reading the question properly, because sometimes our mind will read it as um, which of the following is correct. But um, especially when you're taking test um, questions, read the questions properly, read all the answers properly. Again, sometimes we think we know it right away with a few uh, words only, and that's where we get um, in trouble. So which of the following is incorrect about in an anatomical position? Anybody? I believe it's C. Okay. So the body is not in a prone. It's standing, facing, um, facing. Um, now, uh, can we do this? Superior? What would? What is the um, definition of superior? C. Just read the. Uh, you can. Uh, I don't know. Say what the definition is. Superior is C, above, higher than. Okay. How about inferior? E, below, lower than. Okay. How about anterior? F toward the front. Okay. Um, for uh, posterior. A toward the back. Okay. Um, ventral. J toward the belly. Good. Dorsal. D towards the spine. Okay. Medial. G towards the middle. Good. Okay. Lateral. Anybody for lateral? B. 
okay, away from the midline. Proximal is? I close to. Okay, and distal? H away from. Okay. So what is um, frontal in this um, slide? These are your um, planes, your um, body planes. So frontal is? C. Okay, it's anterior, it divides the body anterior and posterior. And sagittal is? D, divides the body into right and left portions. And mid-sagittal? A divides the body exactly in the middle into equal right and left sides. And your transverse. Divides the body horizontally. Okay. Okay. Any questions regarding that um, first um, few slides? If not, we're moving on to the other um, six dimensions of health. So this is important, um, the six dimensions of health. Um, we have to remember this when we are caring for um, our patients or um, uh, how do you call this? Doing an assessment on our patients, okay? They can come to the, um, they can come to see you for a headache, but you have to look at everything, um, um, you have to look at everything um, that's going on with that person because sometimes um, there would be um, social um, issues. That's why the person is um, stressed and then having all those headaches. So um, the uh, six dimensions um, include um, your physical. So this one, it's um, your uh, actual body health. Mental is what goes on in your thought process. Spiritual, it's um, your relationship with your own self. Okay. Social, it's your interaction with others. Emotional is your feelings. And environment is what's around you. And then health, um, it's the freedom of physical disease. And wellness, it's the lifestyle that we have. It's the diet choices that we make, the exercise that we don't do when we're supposed to do, or for others that are more, um, how do you call this, rigid, they do the exercises. So um, keeping a clean and organized home and clutter-free workplace is, what um, dimension is this? Environmental. It's environmental, okay. Building and maintaining effective relationships with family and friends is? Be social. Social. And then um, a person's relationship with himself is part of? Spiritual. Spiritual, health. Spiritual. okay. Disease prevention, there are three types of disease prevention. So primary is the preventative of behaviors. So this are, you are preventing risk factors. You are avoiding smoking, you are avoiding alcohol. You take your yearly vaccines. So that is primary disease prevention. Secondary disease prevention, it's um, the early diagnosis. So this is when you come for your regular checkup. Um, this is when you do um, lab works or, uh, or you know, uh, to see what is going on. And then tertiary is the treatment um, that happens when a uh, diagnosis is made. So eating a diet high in fruits and vegetables and low in animal fat is um, 
to avoid heart disease is what type of prevention? A, A primary disease primary. prevention. Okay. And then get, getting your annual checkups to test your blood lipids is? is I'm sorry. I did. Okay, secondary. Okay. And then when you do, when you take um, statins, because you found out that your blood uh, lipids are abnormal, what is that? C. Tertiary. Okay. okay. So here, um, did I miss it? No. So biology is study of life. You're going to we're going to see a few of those um, in the next um, courses. Um, homeostasis. This one will always come up. So hom homeostasis, internal balance. It's the like equilibrium, state of equilibrium, where everything everything is running smoothly. Um, so it's. Um, Everything is um, going on well. That's um, homeostasis. And like I, like I mentioned earlier, it's regulated by two of your um, systems, your nervous system and your endocrine system. The nervous system, you're going to, um, uh, the organ that um, is involved with this is your hypothalamus. And then your endocrine is your pituitary um, gland. And like I said, this will you will be hearing a lot of homeostasis, about homeostasis, about the systems um, moving along. Metabolism, it's um, it's the sum of all chemical reactions in an organism. Anabolism is um, building up, and catabolism is broken or breaking down. Okay. So um, ana, I, the way I remember anabolism, ana for add, a for add, building, catabolism is like for cut, you're cutting it broken. Okay. Pathology is the study of disease. Homeostasis is... Anybody? A, a state of balance. Okay, thank you. Which of the following is true about metabolism? So here, which is the, fo the following? Which of the following is true? It is the sum of anabolism and catabolism. Is that true or false? True. True. Yeah. Is it, it's the rate of nutrient utilization? That's true. It's the digestion and utilization of nutrients is true. Catabolic reactions are the reactions where small molecules are combined to large ones. So this is true. Catabolic is breaking down. So you're... Um, that's, that's, that's what, that's true. Anabolism is the breakdown of tissues. Is this true or false? False. False. So anabolism is the opposite building. And then study of disease again is um, what? Pathology. Okay. So you learned about, um, Matter, mass, um, weight. Energy. Um, so 
So this one you have, um, it's the ability of the physical system to do the work. So um, food provides us energy. Um, that's an example. Oops, where did I go? Sorry. So you learned about the three states of the matter. Uh, let's do this. Which of the following is correct about matter? A. So matter is anything that occupies space and has a mass. Which is the which of which one of the following is correct about homeostasis? It means balance. So home, every time it, you'll see homeostasis, it has to have the term balance or equi equilibrium. And then which of the following is not true about energy and matter? The lowest form of energy is heat. Is this true or false? That's okay. false. Okay. So um, actually, that is true. So if you go back to your uh, the slide on energy, um, um, oops, sorry, I have to find a better way. Here, the lowest form of energy. Okay. Um, hold on. Ah, sorry. So the highest form of energy is light. This is actually the false one. Uh, solid is the state of matter that has the lowest energy is true. Gas is the state of matter that has the highest energy. That's true. And energy can be changed, can change the form, but cannot be created or destroyed. And then um, this one, what? What is the following procedure that would count as primary disease of cervical cancer in women? Okay. So that's a vaccine, that's a preventative. Um, and the lowest form of energy is? A. Heat. OK. And then you learned about your atom, protons, and neurons. So um, so um, an atom is neutral, but it means what you have here is the number of protons always equals the number of electrons. Here, what you need to remember is this one. So you learned about um, electrons having orbits. Um, the first orbit always, there's uh, the maximum of electrons in the first orbit is two, second orbit is um, eight, and the third orbit is eight. So this is something that you need to remember, OK? Um, and then, did you try doing all this practice drawing? It helps um, uh, to know the um, atom, more of the atom, okay. Hi, I'm Oni. Um, thank you for joining us. Hi there, I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay. 
you're here with us. Um, Is, are we just going over review right now for the test? Yes, for now, yes. Okay. okay. And then um, you have ions. Um, this is the an atom or a group of atom that has now required a net electrical charge by gaining or losing one or more electrons. Earlier we said atom is neutral. Once they start gaining or um, losing or gaining an electron, it becomes an ion. And then your cation, um, if an atom gains an electron, it's called an an ion and a cation is when they lose um, an electron. I'm not gonna have you do the, uh, the drawings right now. Uh, we will run out of time. And then you did, and you did all your math. I know, so that's, um, Do we need to have the conversions memorized for the test? Do we need to have the it's best, uh It's best to know um, your basic um, conversion formula. So like this one, the conversion formula when you do your math quizzes. You have done your math homeworks, right? Absolutely. It's just yeah. the liters and the milliliters to like... Um, you know, I didn't know yeah. if we had to do that one as well. Um, it's usually best to know it because um, I don't know exactly what comes up in the um, quizzes, um, but it's best to know it. The formula and then the, uh, there are uh, like what they call it, the familiar, the like milliliters, uh, those are very uh, common. So those are good to, to know. So for the math section, are we getting to use the calculator or the or no? I think he advises it's it's always better or good to learn by hand first than the calculator. If you notice in your um, how do you call this? Um, as you go along with the different math, um, it's always better to do by hand. And then later, when you're familiar with the uh, formula or all those, then you can use a uh, calculator. Because he wants you to uh, go step by step in most of the homeworks and the exam. So you don't Is calculator to... loaded? Pardon me? Is a calculator loaded on the exam? You. I think you can, but let me double check because I don't, um, I know, um, let me double check that, okay? And then I'm so sorry, sure. you don't have the exam in front of you, we just know the highlights, but you don't have the exam in front of you, so we no. can. You know focus. who has it? It's Dr. G. But um, I have um, pointers of what the exam will be, so that's what we're um, kind, we'll also be going um, over. Um, it's 4.54. Let me give you a 10-minute break because um, we're running into our um, first hour. And then I will ask about the calculator also. Um, come back. It's 4.55. Uh, 10.05, please. 10 minutes. Is that okay for you guys to do bathroom breaks and all those things? So I'll see you at 10.05. I got a quick question. Yeah, who is this? Is this going to actually last till 9 o'clock? Depends. Um, I'm trying to get as fast as I can, move as fast as I can. Sometimes we can go through. Sometimes I can let you out early once we finish up to lecture 6. OK. OK.
I'm sorry, I got another question. Can, can you hear me? No? Okay, there you go. No, I turned okay. off my mic, that's why. Um, what happens if we can't stay to nine o'clock? I'm just curious. It's actually count I think it's it's like an attendance. Um uh, it's counted to um there's some points to be in a class the whole time. Are you having problems being staying no, over? I was just asking. Okay. Yeah. It's uh attendance um because it's mandatory. Um it's there's some I think he put some points to to that overall. Do you know because I came in late, how many points will I lose? For what? Being For late? Me coming late, yeah. Um, I don't think about losing, but I know he um when it, um I will make a note that you came in. So the important thing is that you're in the class. Okay. Thank you. Is Miss Alvarez in here? I don't think so. I'm sorry, I have a question. Um, oh, here.
Okay. Is everybody back? Yes. Okay. Um, Amanda, are you back? Yes. I'm. I'm. I'm Moni. Imoni. Yeah, I'm back. Karina. Yes. Madeline. Yes. Bryant. I see Bryant. Chelsea, Ruby, Harleen. Oh, sorry, I'm here. Okay. Harleen, Alexis. I'm here. Bianca, uh, no, not Bianca. Yeah, Bianca Bushnell. Bianca, are you back? Yes. Yes, Denise? I'm back. Yes. And my Maiha. Yes. Okay. So um, quickly, lecture two, what you need to remember is valency. This is the number of electrons that an atom wants to gain or lose. Okay. Um, just giving you um, quick um, pointers. Chemical bands. What are chemical bands? They are also known as molecular bonds. It's the mutual attraction between two atoms resulting from a redistribution of their outer electrons. So the major types are ionic and covalent. Um, there is a chart here, the summary, which you just need to remember. Ionic bonds are what are the weaker bonds they are based on one atom giving and another receiving. And then the, um, the one atom becomes a cation and another uh, negative and an ion. And then positive and negative are attracted to each other. Examples of ionic bonds are sodium chloride. And, um, and then for covalent, these are the stronger bonds between both because there is mutual sharing. And then um, the example here, the most common example is water. And then covalent has uh, two types, which is your polar and your nonpolar. Sorry, sometimes it's hard to look for the slide. So your um, okay. So your polar, it's um water. Uh, yes, Selena. Or no, not Selena. Um, Bianca. You raised your hand, Bianca. Are we gonna know specific element like? You're gonna need to know how specific elements are like together on the test? Like sure. are we gonna need to know, obviously we need to know the difference, but are we gonna need to know examples? Of what? Like salt and water, things like that? Um, well, uh, uh, I, you're, you were breaking up, um, it's hard to, can you repeat the question? Please no specific examples. 
um, example oh, only. Does green have? Well, the examples that we're giving are the common ones, and that's what you need to know. You don't need to know the whole element table. And then uh, polar mol. So covalent has two types: polar and nonpolar. Uh, polar is more um, water, and it's hydrophilic. And then nonpolar are fat, and they are hydro. Phobic. So those are just terms that you need to um, remember. Sorry. So um, when two atoms form a bond where two where atoms share electrons on the outermost orbits, they participate in what? So is it ionic bond or covalent bond? Covalent bonding, they're sharing, right? Yes. Very good. Thank you. When one atom in a molecule donates an electron and another atom accepts it, they participate in ionic or covalent? Ionic bonding. Okay, thank you. Then which one of, which of the following is not true about intermolecular in, interactions? Anybody? Polar molecules are hydrophilic. The, not true. Um, look at the question. So, because polar, your polar molecules are hydrophilic. The question is asking what's not true, and that would be um, your letter. Your B, nonpolar molecules are repulsed by each other. This is a neutral. They uh, do not repel or they do not, um, they do not repel each other. Here, um, just uh, remember, this is something you need to remember, the six most common elements, six most common elements in biochemistry. So you have your carbon, your hydrogen, your oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. So this one is um, the most common elements in biochemistry. And then just um, also knowing the definition, monomer. Monomer is one. It's a, and then mer stands for measure or unit. So it's a molecule that can be bonded to each uh, to other identical molecules to form a polymer. So mono is one. Once they start binding or joining another um, molecule, it becomes a polymer. So poly is many. That's your um, word, and then more again is units. So your um, common monomer carbohydrate is glucose. For protein, that's amino acid. For lipid, it's fatty acid. And then nucleic acid is nucleotides. For polymer, your carbohydrate as a polymer it becomes starches, which is your amylose and amyl 
amylopectin, and then a dietary fiber, which is cellulose. Proteins for polymers is polypeptide. Lipids, polymer is triglycerides. Your nucleic acid polymers are your DNA and RNA. So here you studied uh, body cavities. Um, this one, again, it's something you need to remember. Uh, body cavities, you have two, dorsal, which is um, towards the spine. It's um, posterior, and it includes your cranial and your vertebral. And then you have your ventral, which is towards the belly, okay? Um, so your dorsal again, cavity includes the cranial cavity. That's the space inside the skull that contains your brain. It has your spinal cavity or vertebral cavity. And then um, your ventral includes your thoracic, your abdominal, and your pelvic. Um, import, uh, what's important here is for thoracic or your chest cavity, this has your lungs and your hearts. Your pericardial cavity is where your heart is. Your pericardium is the membrane that covers the heart, okay? Pleural cavity is where your lungs are located. And pleural membrane is what covers the lungs. And then for your abdominal cavity, uh, it's called peritoneum. It covers the abdominal cavity. Um, so you're gonna hear those words such as peritonitis, inflammation of the peritoneal membrane. Pleura pleuritis is the inflammation of the membrane of the lung. And then pericarditis is the inflammation of the membrane of the heart. So you learned about the nine regions of the abdominal cavity. So your um, this one you have just remember. Um, you can you try to remember what is in the nine uh, each region. So an example would be for the right hypochondriac region. You have your liver located here. Epigastric region. You have your stomach. Your left hypochondriac region, you have your spleen, and then your left lumbar is your, and then your right lumbar, I'm sorry, is your ascending colon, umbilical is your small intestine, your left lumbar has your descending colon, and then your right iliac has your appendix, and then hypogastric has your uterus, your bladder, and your left iliac has your colon or and your sigmoid okay so the belly button also is in your umbilical region so just as a practice the use the terms on the right to complete the sentences on the left so the region of the abdomen inferior to the umbilical is what? B, hypogastric region. Okay. So umbilical and then inferior is below hypogastric. And your region of the abdomen superior to the umbilical is? Epigastric region. Okay. So if you see here, umbilical. And then the region lateral to the umbilical region is? Lumbar region. Okay. Lateral is, what's the other word for lateral is the side, right? To the left. Yeah. 
and then lateral and then lateral to the epigastric region of the abdomen is hypochondrial region okay and the region of the abdomen inferior to the lumbar is iliac region okay thank you then you have to also know the quadrants. So you have nine regions. Now we also have four quadrants. And this is important in when you do clinical assessments. So you have the right upper quadrant, your uh, right lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, and left upper quadrant, and left lower quadrant. So um, what you see in your right upper quadrant is your liver again. Left upper quadrant is your stomach and your spleen. Your right lower quadrant is your appendix, your cecum, which is the beginning of the ascending colon. And then your left lower quadrant has your colon sigmoid. Okay, terms that need to be um, uh, remembered or memorized. Um, you often hear right lower quadrant when a person goes um, has appendicitis. Um, the pain that they feel is in that right lower quadrant. And also you need to look at or remember um, abbreviations. Um, in clinical notes, um, when you are practicing already, you're not gonna see uh, often the whole word right upper quadrant. You're gonna see R-U-Q or R-L-Q. So those are some things that you need to remember. So um, which quadrant of the abdomen contains the spleen? B. Upper. This, which one? Um, who was answering? It's B. Okay, left upper quadrant. And where does the appendix, um, where can you see the appendix? Right lower quadrant. Okay, thank you, Amona. And what quadrant of the abdomen contains the liver? Right upper quadrant. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the following ones are your um, conversion. So just remembering again the formulas. Uh, Dr. G said that you can use a calculator in your math um, quizzes. Um, however, this quiz tonight or what, that you're going to take later doesn't have a math quiz. So it's purely um, the lecture. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Uh, do you still have your hand up? Um, sorry. Actually, yeah. I do have a question. Yeah, I actually do have a question. Um, did he tell us any areas to specifically focus on? Like, obviously, we know where we're weak, you know what I mean? Like, we each know our weaknesses, but, like, did he say any specific area that, like, sort of really I am. I am giving you the point, the ones that he has highlighted. That's what we're going over, basically. Because there's a lot, but I'm just going over what he has um, highlighted, and uh, that's why you keep I, you see me going back and forth down because I'm also looking at the notes that um, that I have. Okay. I was surprised when we had this one question about like a cow's rumen and everything like that. I just remember, I was like, oh my God, I don't remember that being in the lecture and I don't remember that being in the notes. And maybe I missed it. But I remember that was like a question on the thing and I was like, how would I know that? You know what I mean? So that's why mm -hmm. I was just curious. You know? Yeah. We, um, I, what we do, what's in the practice questions in each lecture, um, he, uh, Often than not, there may be something to that in the quiz. Um, I am giving you highlights of um, his review. Um, in, the, um, in, in the beginning, I said that um, 
there is a, there are tutorials in YouTube that he has made what to uh, he highlights what would be included like in midterms what's included in um, finals things like that so that's what we are um, going over and then later um, once we finish um, uh, reviewing the different lectures I will go through a quiz quizzes a quiz that he had that we made um, and um, sort of like just a summary of what we discussed tonight so um, again it's a lot but I'm trying to give you um, like the highlight that he wants you to uh, that we want you to remember um, for the quiz. So much. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's... Okay, uh, moving on to um, lecture three. So here you're gonna learn, you learn more about carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins, okay? So um, you have um, just uh, macronutrients. What are macronutrients? These are your carbohydrates your lipids or fats, your protein. This is absorbed by the intestines and they can pass to the cells. Your micronutrients, you have vitamins and minerals. You're gonna come across um, vitamins again later when we learn about coenzymes and minerals when we learn about cofactors. Um, Okay, water, it's not considered a macro or a micro, but it's a very important nutrient um, for our body. Uh, micronutrient, um, we only need, uh, how do you call this, a small amount in the body. We don't need to take a, lot, a large amount of this. It, uh, that's why it's called micro, uh, means small. And then for macro, that's where you need um, a lot of, um, uh, of this for your body. Carbohydrates, um, you will see the abbreviation CH or CHO. Okay. Um, you have the different classifications of carbohydrates, the monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligo, and the poly. Your monosaccharides are your glucose or your sugar. And this is only, it's made up of one molecule. That's why you have mono and that's um, meaning one. Under monosaccharides, you have your ribose, fructose, galactose, and your glucose. For disaccharides, now it becomes two. You have um, a carbohydrate consisting of two identical monomers. So now you have lactose, which is um, glucose and galactose, and that's um, milk. Your maltose is glucose and glucose, and this is often found in beer. And then sucrose is uh, glucose and fructose. This is your table sugar. Your polysaccharides include starch and glycogen. Okay, and then cellulose. Um, hold on, I'm looking for the slide.
So your um, another word for cellulose is diet dietary fiber. So you learned about um, the word um, dehydration. This is the removal of water molecule in order to make a new covalent bond between two monomeric units. So that's uh, dehydration. Again, um, this is what's needed to convert a monomer to a polymer. You are, you learn about um, hydrolysis. This is the opposite now, converting your polymer to a monomer. So here, which of the following is a non-digestible polysaccharide? Do you remember? Is it cellulose? Yes. So that's the that's a polysaccharide. Remember your polysaccharide cellulose. Um, that's it's one of it's one of them. Your glucose is a monosaccharide. Your sucrose is a disaccharide. Um, and lactose also is a disaccharide. Monomers are put together in polymeric chains by, the, by which reaction? Hydrolysis, hydrolysis or dehydration? Anybody? Dehydration. Okay. So that's the one that converts the um, mono to a polymer. And um, hydrolysis is the reverse, poly to monomer. Mm. Proteins, the main the, um, function of proteins. Um, fluid, uh, it's a, how do you call this? It's, um, it's for fluid balance. Um, examples of protein are your albumin, hemoglobin, myoglobulin. So um, hold on. Ah. So you have, um, like I said, the functions for protein. You're building tissues, you're repairing your enzymes, your hormones, your fluid balance. Um, they are also transporters. Um, um, like I said, they had the hormones, which you have insulin and growth hormones. Uh, they are also what we call receptors. Um, proteins are receptors. They are um, enzymes where they speed up chemical reactions, um, proteins, I mentioned earlier fibrinogen, that's a important um, uh, piece for the clotting factor. Myoglobulin is for your immune activities. You have... Sorry, I'm just trying to go over. You have the different, um, how do you call this? Protein structures. 
So the first one is the primary level um, of protein structure. This is your amino acid chain. They are what you call linear. Okay, so amino acid chain, they are linear. So this is just how it comes out, aligned. Your secondary level of protein structure, you have your alpha helix, your beta pleated sheet. They are more of a folding um, pattern. And then your, um, well, the slides are off. Then you have your tertiary level, which now you have your 3D configurations. And your, um, the last uh, um, protein structure is your quaternary um, level uh, fracture, protein structure, which is, um, this is the one that is functional now. Um, it's now functional, the protein is now functional. Uh, this are this is a summary of what we of your um, protein structure. So primary amino acid sequence, it's a covalent bond. Your secondary are your coils or your helixes, alpha, beta. Your tertiary is um, amino acid spatial arrangement. It's the 3D configuration. Quaternary has all of the above because it, it's now a functioning unit. Which, what, what bond, the bond that holds amino acids in a protein chain are called what? Is it C? Peptide. Yes, thank you, Maya. Um, which of the following is not a primary function of protein in the body, not a primary function. A. No. Uh, any other answers? Harleen, was that you? B. It's E. E. Thank you. Is that Brian? Yeah. yeah, it's energy fuel. So everything else, the protein is, the protein functions as hormones, receptors, enzymes, structural molecule. But it does, it's not a primary function for energy. And then here again are your um, protein structures. So primary is what? Match it to um, like a, def a characteristic. Anybody? Primary is the amino, amino acid sequence. Okay, and then your secondary is your? Your alpha helix and your beta pleated sheet. Good, your tertiary? 3 dimensional globulin. Thank you, Karina, and your quaternary? is a functional enzyme. Thank you.
So here. So here you learned about your um, about tissues. So um, histology is a study of tissues. Tissue is the group of cells that are similar in structure, in structure, arranged in a specific pattern and united by a specific function. So there are four types of um, tissue classification for tissues. You have your epithelial your connective, your muscle, and your nervous tissue. So um, it is actually, um, there is a, so for epithelial, what you have to remember is the pseudophyte epithelial tissue, which is, this is the one that is found in your trachea, in, and this is also where your goblet cells that produces the mucus um, is found, okay? So again, um, mucus is produced by the goblet cells. So, um, your, there is a summary here, hold on, I'm looking for it. So here, for the connective tissue, you have four types, you have your liquid, your soft, loose connective tissue, your fibrous connective tissue, and your hard connective tissue. For your liquid connective tissue, this includes your blood. The soft includes your areolar and your adipose. Your fibrous now is your tendons, your ligaments, and your hard includes your cartilage and your bone. And then what you need to also look at or remember are the cells. So your liquid connective tissue, it's blood cells. For the um, soft or loose connective, you have your adipose cells. Your fibers has your fibroblast and your hard connective tissue has your chondrocytes and um, also your osteoblast and your osteoclasts. Um, let's just do a practice here. Um, which of the following types of connective tissue is found in tendons and ligaments? Anybody, please? Or I can call out. What is found in tendons and ligaments? Guys, C, fibrous CT. Yes. What, what bone is composed of what? Loose, soft, fibrous, or hard? Hard. Okay. And cartilage is composed of. Pardon me. C. No. Cartilage is under hard. hard. Yes. Are areolar connective tissue is hard. 
Where is that? A, tissue between skin and muscle. Okay. Yeah, it supports the body parts. And then chondrocytes belong to what? Heart. Hard and the matrix of hard connective tissue contains the following except so here it's um, except B. Fiber. so the hard it's um, actually except fibroblasts. Okay, so it has hyaline, elastic, fibrous, and then chondrocytes and all those things. Um, the next, your next muscle tissue, or your next tissue is your muscle, which includes striate, smooth, and cardiac. Okay, so again, this is a summary of the muscle tissue you have. Um, skeletal, what's important here to remember, skeletal is voluntary, it's multi-nuclei, and it's striated. So if you look at the drawing, that's what it is. Um, striated has those like lines, and it's multi-nuclei. Your smooth muscles is involuntary. And it has only one nuclei, and it's what we call a fusive form. There is no stress or stripes. Your cardiac muscles, this is only found in the heart, as the name indicates. Another involuntary muscle, again, it is striated, and it has intercalated discs. And then when, yeah. so just a, another summary, a practice question on that quickly. Skeletal muscle is what among this? Um, Are you guys, you're able to see the PowerPoint, right? And the questions? Yes. Okay. So skeletal muscle, can you match it to this one? Uh, two. Sorry, not two, I'm sorry, three. Three, and there's one more for skeletal muscle. Five? Yes. So your skeletal is the long striped cells or what you call striated and they are multiple nuclei, mo uh, a lot of nuclei, and they are um, voluntarily controlled or consciously controlled. Your smooth muscle is what? One. One. They are short or what also you can say, sometimes you're going to see the term fusiform. Um, they are not striated. They only have one nucleus. And your cardiac muscle is? Two and four. Okay. So they're um, intercalated discs. They are involuntary. Thank you. And then the last um, of your tissues are the nervous tissue and this... Um, this one has your, um, what do you call nerve cells, the neurons, nerve cells. They are specialized cells that work like one-way electrical wires to conduct electric impulses. Um, you have dendrites, you have um, the cell body or what is known as the soma, and then your accents. So electrical impulses, uh, come from the soma to the axon, then to the dendrites. Schwann cells, 
They are special glial cells that wrap themselves around the axon. They are filled with fat-like material called myelin. Okay, myelin, white matter, they transport information from the gray matter, which is in the center of the brain. And then here you learn about, again, the metric system. So yeah, just familiarize yourselves with, um, you know, this one's like how many, the milliliter, centimeter, and all those things. So it's six. So quickly, do we still have everybody for um, So for lecture four, you are learning now about um, DNA, RNA, chromosomes, um, all those um, goodies. So chromosomes, um, they are present in the reproductive cells. And how many chromosomes do, do we have? 46 chromosomes. So um, uh, DNA, it's a polymer structure built up from the large number of similar units. Um, the simple units is what we call nucleotides, okay? Um, here you have to remember that um, for both um, DNA and RNA, they all have what we call a base. And then you have the sugar or the, um, the yeah, the sugar. So, sorry, uh, hold on. I'm, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yeah, so, hold on, hold on. I missed. Okay. So for here, you just you have to remember the um, base pairs, the base pairs, or what we have. Um, now I'm hold on. I'm I'm lost. <laughs> hold on. My apologies. Hold on, please. I think I'll start with this one. Okay, here. Too many books. Okay. So uh, the difference here, RNA and DNA. So your RNA, they, like I said, both include a phosphate group, a sugar group, and a base, okay? So the RNA, you have 
um, an RNA only has one strand. Your DNA has double strand. Your RNA has the phosphate group. The sugar group is what we call ribose. And then your nucleic blaze. Your DNA, which is double stranded, they have a phosphate group. The sugar group now is what we call the oxyribose and then the nucleic base. So they, like I said, they both have they both have phosphate, sugar, and nucleic bases. The differences are ribose for RNA and the oxyribose for DNA. And then for your nucleic bases, the RNA has four. It has your adenine, your guanine, your cytosine, and your uracil. In DNA, you have adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. So that's the, differ the other difference between RNA and DNA. So um, your common bases, again, adenine, guanine, cytosine, but uracil is only found in RNA and thymine is in DNA. Your... Uh, okay. Other thing to remember, um, in the DNA, because uh, they have double strands, or what we have, what we call complementary strands, your adenine matches up with your thymine, your cytosine with your guanine. So this is a standard, uh, this is what happens. Your adenine with thymine, your thymine, and your cytosine with your guanine. That's for your um, DNA. Now for the RNA, the thymine changes to your um, uracil. So when you're looking at, uh, you've reviewed this, when you're looking at your strands, it complements or um, it goes together always. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So here it's a summary of what we just discussed, RNA. Your central sugar is your ribose, and DNA it's your deoxyribose. Your nucleic bases include, again, adenine, gu cytosine, guanine, and uracil. Here it's with thymine. Your genetic code here, it's copy for an RNA. Your DNA has the original genetic code number of strands for rna is one and your dna has the double strand so nucleotides of rna do not include what Anybody or me? Who was that? I'm sorry. Okay. Who answered? I'm sorry. I did. Okay. And that was the uh, your answer is B, right? The oxyribose. Right. So, what is the nucleotide mm -hmm. for RNA? Do you remember RNA? What's the nucleotide for RNA? Ribose. Ribose. Thank you. And then here, so um, we'll just do true or false. The DNA monomer include a phosphate group, and RNA monomers do not. This is true or false? False. Okay. Thank you. They, they both. both do. Thank you. 
there is a sugar molecule in the center of RNA monomers, but DNA do not. True or false? Anybody? That's false. Okay. They both There's sugar instead of sugar in the DNA instead oh. of the ribose. Okay. Correct? Okay. They both have sugar molecules. Ribose for RNA and the oxyribose for DNA. And then um, is nucleic the nucleic basis of DNA include cytosine and RNA do not. Is this true or false? False. Okay. They are both found. The cytosine is both found in DNA and RNA. DNA is double-stranded while RNA is single-stranded. True or false? True. 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 Thank you. True. Thank you. And then the matching strands of DNA are held together by... Hydrogen bonds. Thank you. Then you just need to learn, remember what is transcription, transcription and translation. Transcription is what we call rewriting or copying. And um, And translation occurs in the nucleus of the cell. And then translation is the process of converting the messenger RNA to a polypeptide, which occurs in the cytoplasm. So transcription and translation. So the entire DNA library in the cell nucleus is divided into sections called chromosomes. Very good, thank you. And the um, process of copying a single gene from the DNA library is? mRNA. Thank you. And the reading a sequence of nucleotides and decoding it into a sequence of amino acids that will make up a new protein is called transcription. transcription. Okay. So, um, what is it? I, I heard two different people said, sounded like they said different things. Transcription. Actually, who was the other one who answered? It was translation. Translation. It's actually translation. Transcription is rewriting or copying. The decoding um, is done under translation where the messenger RNA um, transports it out of the nucleus. And then that's when it becomes a polypeptide.
the hierarchy of needs, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is just something you, um, you know, you could read on and just um, know, because you'll encounter this in um, uh, future um, lectures. And then we just move uh, move to um, again. What is disease? That's the pathological condition of a part, organ, or system of an organism resulting from various causes and characterized by an identifiable group of signs and symptoms. Okay. So here again, they talks about your homeostasis, which is your balance or your equilibrium and equilibrium. And this is managed by the nervous and the endocrine system. Here, what you just need to remember here is um, Marasmus versus Marasmus and Kwashiorkor. These are um, protein deficiency diseases. Marasmus is the first year of life. Your Kwashiorkor happens two years or more. Okay. Your um, Ricketts disease, it's a vitamin D deficiency or lack of vitamin where calcium is not absorbed. So you get to have osteomalacia, which is weakened bones. And then... This is one thing you need to remember, the disease terminology. Um, what is etiology? That is the study of um, cause of a disease. What's an incidence is the rate of new cases of a disease, when, where, and how often it occurs. Acute is sudden, or anything that um, happens um, less than three months. And then your chronic is something that goes more than three months. Sometimes you're going to hear acute pain versus chronic pain. So acute is something that just happens right away, and it's been occurring less than three months. Your idiopathic, it's a disease of unknown origin, so they don't know the cause. Your iatrogenic is a disease from adverse um, effects of treatment um, or um, medication or therapy. So it's a, like a side effect. I give you this medication, um, but then you start feeling nauseous or you start having rashes. So that's an effect from a treatment. Communicable disease is the transmission from one person to another. Um, examples could be um, by fecal route, so that's feces to aura pieces to oral epidemic many people acquiring a certain disease at the same time pandemic it's the infectious disease spread over a large um, region nosocomial that's um, what we call i'm sorry um, hospital acquired um, so the person comes into the hospital with just say um, pneumonia uh, they end up being in the hospital for a couple of days, um, but then they develop, say, um, bed sores. So that's a nosocomial infection, something that happened in the hospital or a nursing home. And then sign. Sign is an objective evidence of a disease. So a sign is uh, something measurable. So um, you are measuring your vital signs, temperature, your pulse, your respiration. That is what you call a sign. A symptom is a subjective evidence of the disease. So this is something 
that the patient would say, I am feeling, so I have pain. But you as a medical practitioner cannot, um, you know, cannot gauge what type, what kind of pain the person is saying, having or what uh, level of pain the person is having. Same thing with nausea. I, the patient can say, I have nausea, but you do not know because you cannot see it. Now, when they have vomiting, then that's when it becomes a sign because you can see the vomitus. Again, this is saying, you know, going back to the uh, disease prevention, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Uh, let's see. So when a medication causes an unpleasant side effect, such as nausea, the symptom would be called what? Idiopathic? iatrogenic, communicable, incidental. B? Iatrogenic, okay. What is the study of the cause of the disease? Is it A? Etiology. Etiology. Very good. And infectious disease acquired at clinical institutions are called? C. Nosocomial. OK, thank you. Um, approximately one third of adult Americans are considered overweight or obese. This statement is about? What? Incidence of obesity, mortality associated with obesity, prevalence of obesity, morbid obesity, or etiology of obesity? E? Etiology, okay. Um, actually, it's the incidence of um, obesity. Etiology is the study. Um, of obesity and then catching a disease in the earliest stage of in the early earliest stages by getting regular checkup is called primary secondary tertiary secondary very good and then nausea is an example of a sign or a symptom a sign a like you symptom. symptom symptom again um a uh, sign is measurable. It is something that you can see. A symptom is subjective. It's something that the patient can say, I have, but you as a medical person are not able to measure it. Okay. And then you have again your math here. So these are something that you just need to be familiar with. You'll come across it um, in future lessons when you're doing calculations. So anything else? Uh, One more, and then probably you can take a quick break. How are you guys holding up? 6.30, 6.16. We're into our two and a half hours already. Um, you can take, we can have, you can have your, um, it's dinner there, right? Dinner break. Do you want at 6.30 or at 7.00? I have no vote. I'm good. You're good. Okay. Anybody else? Any? Okay. We'll just finish uh, lecture five and then probably take your dinner break. Do lecture six quickly. And then um, we have the uh, quiz, um, something that um, 
we made up, uh, we completed earlier. We'll just ask you, and then we can then we can call it a night. Okay. Um, so. For lecture five, um, so for lecture five, uh, lipids, fats, um, you have um, soluble and non soluble, uh, you have water soluble water insoluble so hydrophilic that's always water hydro is water hydrophobic is against water so your water soluble molecules include your carbohydrate your amino acid your nucleotides your hydrophobic um, which is um, again um, water insoluble are your lipids this we learned uh, lessons ago ionic covalent covalent you have polar and non-polar um, uh, bond so for um, saturated fat this are a fatty acid molecule with the bonds are full with hydrogen saturated fat it's solid unsaturated fat it's liquid um, unsaturated a fatty acid molecule the bonds are full of hydrogen and double hydrogen bonds you will um, You will come across again fat um, when you talk about or learn about um, cholesterol levels, low density um, levels and, and high density um, uh, lipids. Um, um, that's where you're going to hear that again. So um, saturated fats, you get that from meat, eggs, milk, butter, animal fat, okay? And then, like we said, unsaturated fat is liquids or oils. Your um, saturated was the solid fat. Trans. This term, trans configuration, the hydrogen atoms are on the opposite side of the two adjacent carbon atoms in this double bond. So they're across from each other. Um, trans configuration or the double bonds. Hydrogenation, it turns unsaturated to saturated fatty acids. So, um,
so what um when the fat is not used by the body as energy what happens to it you, you know it's kept in the body as um basically fat so first it's used as energy but if there's a lot of it then it is fat Not much fatty acid by glycerides. Let's go to that. Hold on. So your um, lipids are, like we said, are the insoluble in water. They um, they are soluble in organic um, solvents, but not the water. Um, lipids. Um, has fatty acids, cholesterol, phospholipids, triglycerides, ketone, and single lipids. Surfactants, organic compounds that are amph Amphiphilic, they contain both hydrophobic groups and hydrophilic groups. They are compounds that lower the surface te tension of a liquid. Your different surfactants are phospholipids, soap, detergents, emulsifying agents, and certain proteins. Cholesterol, the um, plants are always cholesterol free. just looking at this what this is a simplified picture of what do you remember a triglyceride and then what the following does not contain cholesterol Peanut butter. butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, uh, the term free radicals, molecules that hold an extra electron, which makes them highly unstable. So free radicals have extra electrons with, on them. Pro-oxidants factors that can speed up oxidative damage caused by free radicals because they bring more free radicals into our bodies. Oxygen works as a pro-oxidant. Antioxidants are agents that counteract free radicals, preventing oxidation and oxidative damage to the tissues. These are examples of your antioxidant, vitamin E, C, beta-carotene, selenium, and et cetera. Uh, which of the following has the lowest antioxidant content?
Do you, do you remember? I guessed on this one and I said D. Iceberg lettuce, yes. It's um, actually, it was in one of the slides that we just, um, uh, here. So anything that's dark, red, the darker, the better. Red, purple, dark green, bright orange, they are the colors of antioxidant. Okay. And then, um, so the heart, the heart, the heart, it's, um, What's need, what you need to remember here, the heart, it's in the middle mediastinum of the body, okay? And then it's covered by the pericardium, that's the membrane, okay? The heart has um, four cavities. Do you know the four cavities of the heart? or chambers. So you have the right and the left atrium, and then the right and the left ventricle. Okay. So um, let's go to, yeah. So what chamber receives the blood from the body? The right atrium. Okay. So um, just a quick uh, summary. So when the, <clears throat> from the body, so this is already the heart. So from the body, um, the deoxygenated or the venous blood, the deoxygenated blood enters the heart through two, through the superior and the inferior vena cava. So here. So um, from the inferior vena cava and su in superior vena cava, it goes to the right atrium of the heart. Let me see if there's a better picture of the heart. Here. So these are your inferior and your superior vena cava. It goes into the right atrium. The right atrium, it goes to the right ventricle, passing what valve? The tricuspid valve, right? Then from the right ventricle, it will go through the pulmonic valve, and it will go to the pulmonary artery, then to your lungs. In the lungs, that's where the um, blood is oxygenated. Um, once the oxygenated blood is ready, it goes through the pulmonary veins, now to your left atrium. Left atrium, it passes to your mitral bicuspid valve and it goes to the left ventricle. The left ventricle, it goes to the aortic valve, into the aorta, and then it goes in for systemic circulation in the body, okay? So in general, the arteries um, carry, uh, or in, in general, Arteries carry oxygenated blood, but in the heart, it's the on, the pulmonary artery is the only one that carries the deoxygenated blood, and then veins usually carry the ox the um, deoxygenated blood from or the blood that hasn't been oxygenated. Um, the only one that uh, it's different is the pulmonary vein. 
so again, to make myself clear, pulmonary arteries is the only artery in the body that carries deoxygenated blood. All the other arteries carry oxygenated blood. Pulmonary vein is the only vein that carries oxygenated blood. All other veins carry deoxygenated blood. And then, um, what else? So let's just do a quick answer here. Just be familiar with the valves. Okay, the membrane that surrounds the heart is what? The pericardium. Okay, thank you. What um, the heart chamber that contracts and sends blood out to the aorta is what? What is the heart chamber that contracts and sends out Left the blood? Ventricle. Thank you. The heart chamber that receives the blood from the vena cava is? Right, atrium. Thank you, Madeline. The heart chamber that sends the blood to the pulmonary artery is? Right, ventricle. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, the heart chamber that receives the oxygenated blood coming from the lungs. This is the right atrium? No, we're coming from the lungs now. Oh, okay. Left atrium. Left atrium, okay. So the right side receives, the right atrium receives it from the body, deoxygenated blood from the body. The left atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs. The heart valve that serves as a one-way door between the left atrium and the left ventricle is? The tricuspid valve. Anybody else? The mitral or bicuspid. Mitral, yeah. Tricuspid valve is in the right side. From right atrium to right ventricle is a tricuspid yeah. valve. Mitral yeah. is from the left atrium to the left ventricle. Where is your aortic valve? Oh, did, oh, it's the next answer. Next question. The heart valve that serves as the exit from the left ventricle is? Pulmonary valve. Your um, aortic valve. Aortic. Aortic. So from the left side, that's aortic, and then the the right here, the heart valve that serves as the exit from the right ventricle is your pulmonary valve. So you just have uh, try to uh, remember that. Um, again, um, it may come out um, your inferior and your superior vena cava goes into your right atrium, right atrium goes down the tricuspid valve to your right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it goes to the pulmonary valve, to the pulmonary artery, to the lungs. From the lungs, it passes the pulmonary vein to the left atrium, down to your mitral valve. Mitral or bicuspid is the same. Down to your left ventricle. The left ventricle, it goes through the aortic valve to your aorta and then to your, um, to the rest of the body, okay? Any questions on that?
So here you learn um, when when you do cholesterol. Um, I know a few of you probably have done cholesterol lab work. LDL is all it's called um, bad cholesterol or lousy cholesterol. Um, HDL is the high density um, lipoprotein, which is the um, good cholesterol. And then you have your hardening of the arteries due to plaque formation is atherosclerosis. Myocardial infarction or heart attack is the um, suffocation of test of tissue death. Um, and this causes ischemia caused by the lack of blood flow. Get very fatal in some cases. And then here again, the microliters. So it's uh, 640. Uh, So um, be back at 7, um, well, your time, 7.15, and then we'll just do lecture 6, and then the final question, um, question and answer portion, and then we will be dismissed. So I'll see you guys at 7.15.
Are we back or no? Are we coming back in like a minute? Two? Yes, Blanca. Blanca, did you need anything? Yeah, when are we coming back? When are we supposed to be back on? Because we took a break for dinner, right? Yeah, 7.15. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. You're welcome.
Okay, guys, time to come back. Trickling in, there you go. How's the weather there in the Bay Area? It's cold. Oh, it's cold. Cold. Where are you at? I'm, I'm in, in the, the. I'm in the Philippines. Oh, how's the weather out there? Hot. <laughs> 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 well, hopefully we'll be back in the Bay Area soon. Anyway, um, are we all back? That way we can finish lecture six, do the question and answer, and then I can yes. let you go. Um, yes. Okay. Hi, Moni, you're back. I have... Yes, uh, I'm back. Okay, Alexis. Yes. I see Harleen. Okay, so we can... Um, let's just do this quickly. Um, so lecture six is, oh, sorry, did I not share? So lecture six is cell anatomy and then the, um, your body system is the respiratory system. So what you just need to remember here, the, uh, the two types of um, cells or the differences, the differences, is, differences here are for your prokaryotes, you have them having no nucleus, and your eukaryotes has a nucleus. Both have DNAs. Um, for the prokaryotes, this is stored in a ring shape, free floating in the cell cytoplasm. And for the eukaryotes, it's um, stored inside the nucleus. And it never leaves the nucleus. Um, and then prokaryotes are smaller, they're more primitive, they're ancient. Well, your eukaryotes are larger, they are more advanced, modern, and complex. So example for prokaryotes are your bacteria, and for your eukaryotes are your protista, your fungi, your yeast, plants, and animals. So this is an example, uh, sample drawing of that one. You need to just uh, know um, you know, the cell anatomy and basically what, uh, like a primary function for each. Um, so, um, cytoplasmic membrane, that's the plasma membrane, composed mainly of phospholipid bilayer and member protein. Your nucleus contains the DNA. Your nucleus, it produces the messenger RNA that produces the ribosomes. Your endoplasmic reticulum, it's, um, this is the one that where the transcription um, occurs. And then ribosomes, they translate the RNA sequence into amino acid um, sequence. Your Golgi apparatus is, it activates the new proteins, your central, um, the two tubular structures that conduct the cell division, mitosis, you're gonna learn that later. 
Mitochondria is the um, energy engine. This is where your uh, uh, ATP is produced. Um, this is where the Krebs cycle um, occurs. Lysosomes are the bubbles filled with digestive enzymes. Vacuole is the container organelle. So here. Just do in summary. So here we just match um, the, the cell organelles um, with the function. So cell nucleus is responsible for what? Um, if you can give the function here. B contains and protects the DNA. Thank you. How about nucleus? G. It produces the ribosomes. Ribosome. What's the function of a ribosome? Translate them into a polypeptide chain. Okay. So it translates the messenger RNA into the polypeptide chain. And the plastic radiculum? B. It navigates the messenger RNA out of the nucleus to meet with the ribosome. How about your Golgi apparatus? What does it do? Activates newly made proteins. Thank you. Cytoplasm. J. It's a fluid no. that, yeah. yeah. So J. Fluid that serves as medium for most chemical reactions. Cytoplastic membrane. C, cell from the out, cell outside. Yeah. And then what's a vacuole? D contains and protects the DNA. Uh, vacuole? No, it's, uh, no, that's the. Is it A? So a. As a container? Yes. How about your mitochondria? F produces most ATPs. Okay, um, your lysosome contains digestive enzymes E. And, okay, and your centrioles. They govern cell division. Thank you. So here, your cytoplastic membrane, again, it is made up of the phospholipid bilayer and membrane proteins. And it's a gate or channel to allow molecules to move in and out of the cell. Um, you have two forms of tra um, transport, membrane transport. One is the passive transport, and the second one is called active transport. Passive transport, there is no energy um, that is used, so no effort required, no ATPs are consumed. There are three classifications. You have simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Simple diffusion is gas exchange. Facilitative diffusion is the glucose into the cell. Osmosis is the um, semi-permeable membrane that does not allow larger molecules. So water dilutes it. Okay. And then your active transport is, um, <clears throat> it needs energy to function or ATP to function. And you have two, which is your proton, protein pump and your um, phagocytosis. Protein pump, transport, transpo is done by the protein. The, the exchange is in and outside of the cell. Um, example for protein pump is your sodium and your potassium. Phagocytosis is engulfing something. And then you came across the terms endocytosis, which is inside the cell 
and exocytosis, which is outside of the cell. So, um, cytoplasmic membrane is composed of what? Anybody? Is it D? Thank you, Brian. Phospholipids and proteins. Which of the following modes of cross-membrane transport requires ATP to be spent or energy to be to, to be used? Is it A, simple diffusion? Do we have another? B. B, sorry. C. Phagocytosis. So simple facilitated osmosis are your passive um, transport. Um, they do not require um, energy or um, ATPs. Um, your phagocytosis and protein pump are under your um, active transport, which requires um, energy or ATP. And then when molecules can spontaneously move across the cell membrane, it's called? A. Actually, it's uh, B, passive. Okay. Then here, your um, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. Um, so hypertonic, the, um, there is a high concentration outside than inside of the cell. The hypotonic, there is less concentration outside than inside of the cell. And then isotonic, there's equal concentration in and out of the cell. So for hypertonic, um, hypertonic the water goes outside of the cell to dilute What's, out, what's outside, making it um, equal or, um, uh, how do you call this? Um, making, making it have an equal concentration. And then hypertonic also, um, when the water goes out of the cell, it causes the cells to shrink, okay? And hypotonic, the, the water enters the cell to make the cell bigger and that's when the cell can actually swell or blow up. And the, in isotonic, there is no entry or exit of water because there's already an equal concentration. So usually with this, um, water goes from a lower to a higher concentration. And then, um, it's the intracellular. Here, uh, oxygen moves from lung alveoli into the blood by what, um, tra what transport? So oxygen moves, or what we call gas exchange. Where does, what, ha which, um, which uh, transport does this happen in? Active transport. Oxygen, it's um, under, it happens in the simple diffusion. Simple is under passive. So 
simple diffusion, again, gas exchange. Um, facilitative diffusion, this is what happens with the glucose and the cells. And then osmosis is um, with water. So glucose moves from blood into the cells by the, I said it already, facilitated diffusion. And then um, water molecules move toward which um, solution? Is it A? Hypertonic solution. And then the passive movement of water molecule is called? B, osmosis. Yes. So you just have to remember again, passive is diffusion, simple facilitated osmosis, and then active is protein pump and phagocytosis. Um, protein pump, that's uh, what the two um, elements that are involved, highly involved are the, and in this are sodium and potassium. Intracellular, it's inside the cell, extracellular, outside the cell, okay? Then phagocytosis, it's engulfing something. Um, endocytosis is um, the process, the name of the process. Endo means in or within. Exocytosis is outside, out or outside. So inside the cell, outside the cell. for um, respiratory system or pulmonary system. Primary function is, we all know gas exchange, how we breathe. Ventilation is the inflation and deflation that moves the air in and out of the lungs. Your um, respiratory system, So here, the upper respiratory system consists of the, um, it's, it's the path, pathways for the air to enter oh, and exit. Somebody's mic is on. So again, the upper respiratory system, it's the pathway for the air to enter and exit the lungs where exchange of gases takes place. This involves your nasal, your nose, your sinuses, your um, even your um, mouth, the pharynx and the larynx. And then your um, the rest, this is what you call the lower respiratory tract, which is your trachea, your um, bronchi and your lungs, okay. So um, epiglottis, this is a thin, small, um, elastic cartilage located above the pharynx and it serves like a trap door. So it folds over the glottis to prevent food and liquid from entering the trachea during the act of swallowing. So that's epiglottis. And then 
um, trachea. It's um, it's the windpipe. That's the trachea. It's cartilages, cartilaginous rings in the trachea. Um, this keeps the trachea from um, this keeps the trachea open at all times. And then you have two bronchi, your right and your left bronchi, that also then leads to your two um, two lungs. Okay. In the lungs, your right lung has three lobes and your left lung has two lobes. Um, the gas exchange happens in the alveoli. And then, um, so um, well, this is, which of the following is not true about lung anatomy? So we just go each one. Each lung is a collection of millions of alveoli, true or false? True. The gas exchange happens in the alveoli, true or false? True. The right lung includes three lobes. The left lung has two lobes. True. Each lung is surrounded by the pleural membrane. False. Anybody has a different answer? True. True. And then the pleural space is the space between the lung and the pleural membrane. False. False. Yeah, that's the space between the two layers of pleura, which is your visceral and your parietal. Okay. And then that's the math. Okay. And then. I just have, uh, well, these are multiple choice questions. We do not have it um, online, uh, what do you call this, in a PowerPoint yet, because this was just done. So we'll just take time to answer, and then after this, um, you can um, be dismissed. So um, one, the organization of the human body follows a hierarchy order starting from the smallest unit to the organ systems. Which of the following correctly responds to this hierarchy? A, cells, molecules, tissue, organs. B, cells, tissues, organs, organ system. C, molecules, atoms, cells, organs. Or D, cells, organ, system, molecules. B, is it B? Yes, cells, tissues, organs, organ system. The organ system that consists of hormone producing glands is the A, sensory, B, muscular, C, integumentary, D, skeletal, or E, endocrine. D, E, endocrine. E, endocrine. Three, the dimension of health that relates to the ability to connect with others and form healthy relationship is A, physical, B, mental, C, emotional, D, social. D, D. social. Which field of study focuses on the structure of anatomical structures? A, biology, B, anatomy, 
C, physiology, D, homeostasis. B. B. Which is anatomy. The dimension of health that focuses on the expression and management of one's feelings is A, physical, B, mental, C, emotional, D, social. C, emotional. C, emotional. Thank you, Ruby. What is the study of living things, including the human body, called? A, biology, B, anatomy, C, physiology, D, homeostasis. Biology. 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 Okay. Seven, which type of disease prevention focuses on preventing behaviors that increase the risk of diseases? A, primary disease prevention, B, secondary preve disease prevention, or C, tertiary disease prevention? Primary. Primary. So primary is uh, risk fact eliminating the risk factors. Which type of disease prevention includes early diagnosis and regular checkup? A, primary, B, secondary, C, tertiary. B, secondary. Secondary, okay. Which type of molecule dissolves in water? A, organic, B, inorganic, C, hydrophilic, B, hydrophobic. Hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. Which cavity contains the brain? Dorsal cavity, ventral cavity, thoracic cavity, pelvic cavity. A dorsal. A dorsal cavity, brain and spinal cord. Which region of the abdomen is associated with the stomach? Your right hypochondria region, your epigastric region, your thoracic, uh, your right, I'm sorry, I mixed it, it's too small, right hypochondric, hypochondric region, right lumbar region, right inguinal or left inguinal? Epigastric. So, epigastric, uh, no, this is for the appendix. Is it your high, right hypochondriac, your right lumbar, your right iliac or your left in, in iliac? Where's your appendix located? Is it deep? Left inguinal? No. It's, it's in the right your side. Right. right hypochondriac region. That's where the appendix is. Which of the following tissues most internal and external covers the internal and external surfaces of the body. Connective, muscle, epithelial, nervous. Which tissue covers the internal and external surfaces of the body? Epithelial. Epithelial. What is the main protein in connective tissues? A, collagen, B, actin, C, myosin, D, keratin. Collagen. Collagen, thank you. Which of the following is not a function of protein, structural support, enzymatic activity, hormone regulation, or energy storage? Energy, energy storage. storage. Thank you. Proteins are composed of A, monosaccharides, B, nucleotides, C, amino acids, D, fatty acids. C. Amino acids. Thank you. Cellulose is a type of carbohydrate that A, can be digested by humans, B, is broken down by the bacteria in the colon. C, can be converted into starch. And D, provides immediate energy. B. It's broken down by bacteria in the colon. What are the support cells for neurons called? A, dendrites. B, axon terminals. C, Schwann cells. Or D, neural, neuroglia. 
Is it C? One more try. B. No. Yeah. So, the no. so the support cells for neurons is the neur neuroglia. How is ATP converted into ADP? Adding a phosphate group, breaking a high energy bond, synthesizing proteins, or replicating DNA. B, breaking a, a bond. Yes, a high energy bond. Okay. Which process involves reading the mRNA sequence and creating a protein? A, reproduction. B, replication. B, translation. A, transcription. Translation. Translation. Thank you. DNA is a double-stranded molecule, while RNA is A, triple-stranded, B, quadruple-stranded, D, double-stranded like DNA, or A, single-stranded? A, single-stranded. Thank you. Which process involves copying a gene from DNA to make a messenger RNA? A, translation, B, transcription, C, replication, and D, reproduction. B, transcription. Okay. Transcription, copying, or rewriting. Which of the following is a component of RNA nucleotide, or the base? Is it the, the oxyribose, thymine, phosphate group, or uracil? Uracil. Uracil. So RNA has the uracil, the DNA has the um, thymine. Homeostasis is disrupted in A, healthy individuals, B, cells with sufficient ATP, C, disease conditions, or D, DNA replication. C, disease conditions? Yes. Plaque buildup in arterial walls can result in A, atherosclerosis, B, arterial occlusion, C, tissue ischemia, or D, all of the above? D, all of the above. Yes. 26, what is the function of HDL cholesterol? A, it carries cholesterol from the liver to the tissues. B, it picks up excess cholesterol and returns it to the liver. C, facilitates the breakdown of triglycerides. And D, promotes the formation of plaque in arterial walls. A. Any uh, could be, but it's but it is picking up excess cholesterol and returns it to the liver. Which valve pre prevents backflow of blood from the right ventricle to the right atrium? Aortic valve, tricuspid valve, pulmonary valve, mitral valve. Tricuspid. Thank you, Madeline. Free radicals are highly unstable, unstable molecules that have A, extra proton, B, extra electron, C, extra neutron, or D, extra valence electrons. What does free e radicals have? E extra electron. Yes, thank you very much. Um. Cholesterol serves as a precursor for the synthesis of A, fatty acids, B, triglycerides, C, steroid hormones, and D, phospholipids. Is it B? Any another answer? Is it steroid hormones? Steroid hormones. What is the main component of triglycerides? 
A, glycerol and three fatty acids. B, glycerol and one fatty acid. C, glycerol and two fatty acids. D, glycerol and four fatty acids. A. It's glycerol and three fatty acids for triglycerides. Which of the following lipids are solid at room temperature? A, saturated fats. B, monosaturated fats. C, polyunsaturated fats. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. B, monounsaturated fats. C, polyunsaturated fats. And D, trans fats. Which lipids are solid? Saturated fats. Thank you. What is the role of capillaries surrounding the alveoli in the respiratory system? A, production of oxygen. B, transportation of carbon dioxide. C, gas exchange with the bloodstream. And, or D, protection against pathogens. C, the gas exchange. Thank you. Which structure or which organelle, I'm sorry, is known as the power plant of the cell? A, nucleus, B, lysosome, C, mitochondria, and D, ribosome. Mitochondria. C, mitochondria. mitochondria is a power plant, yes. Which structure closes the larynx during the swallowing process? A, larynx, B, trachea, C, pharynx, and D, epiglottis. D, epiglottis. Yes. How many lobes does the right lung have? One, two, three, or four? Three. 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 And the left lung has? Two. One. Le two. Which structure plays a crucial role in inhalation and exhalation? Epiglottis, larynx, diaphragm, trachea. Diaphragm. diaphragm. The gas exchange primarily occurs in the A, bronchioles, B, alveoli, C, trachea, D, nasal cavity. Alveoli. Alveoli. Which process involves the movement of small nonpolar particles down the concentration gradient? A, simple diffusion, B, facilitated diffusion, C, osmosis, and or D, active transport? A, simple diffusion. Thank you. All organisms can be classified as either A, prokaryotes or eukaryotes, B, animals or plants, C, multicellular or unicellular, D, vertebrae or invertebrae. A. 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 Prokaryotes or eukaryotes. Which of the following contains saturated fat? Olive oil, sesame seeds, peanuts, or coconut? Coconut. Coconut. Which of the following is a source of trans fat? Beef, coconut, seafood, peanut butter, or margarine? Margarine. Margarine. Prostaglandins and leukotrienes work as A, hormones, B, vitamins, C, local messengers, or D, structural molecules? Hormones. Another, anybody else? Another try. What was the no. first word that you said? Prostaglandins and leukotrienes work as hormones, vitamins, local messengers, or structural molecules. Local messengers? Local messengers, yes. Which of the following is not a good source of antioxidant? Oranges, tomatoes, iceberg lettuce, or blackberries? If ATP works like a rechargeable battery, then when the battery is discharged, it becomes A, ADP plus P, 
B, AMP plus P, C, phosphate groups, or D, adenosine? D. And uh, any other uh, try? So once uh, an ATP is used, the energy used in ATP, what does it become? ADP. ADP. And then, and then ATP hooks up again with another phosphate. It becomes ATP again. ATP is used as an energy source. It becomes ADP. So it's a cycle. Okay. Patient has a prescribed medication which caused him to experience vomiting. His vomiting is considered A, idiopathic, iatrogenic, nosocomial, or morbid. Did you say he took a medicine yeah. that caused vomiting? Mm -hmm. So it's iatrogenic. Iatrogenic. So iatrogenic, it's something that happens when there's a prescribed treatment, be it medication, uh, rehab, or anything. There's a side effect to that treatment. So it's caused by um, what is prescribed. Infectious disease acquired at clinical institutions are called epidemic, iatrogenic, nosocomial, or idiopathic. Uh, you said acquired, like from a hospital or yeah. a clinic? So it's uh, nosocomial. Yeah. So nosocomial, the other term for that is hospital acquired. Okay. And then the cell, uh, a very common one is uh, C. diff, the Clostridium difficile. Uh, somebody goes in the hospital and then starts having excessive um, diarrhea because they caught the C. diff in the hospital. The cells of nervous tissue that protect and support neurons are called A. glial cells, B. stratified squamous, C. simple columnar, or D. goblet cells. I thought we were talking about myelin sheath. I thought that should be on there. That's uh, with a Schwann cell. But, so the cells of the nervous tissue that protect and support the neurons are the glial cells. Goblet cells, what do they produce? The mucus, right? Which of the following does not belong in the abdomen cavity? A, kidneys, B, gallbladder, C, pancreas, D, mediastinum. D, mediastinum. Okay. The bifurcation of the trachea is called A, epiglottis, B, carina, C, larynx, or D, glottis. The bifurcation is called carina. The most important respiratory muscle during inspiration or when you're inhaling is the A, diaphragm, B, diaphragm intercostal muscles, C, intercostal muscles, or D, other muscles different from diaphragm and intercostal muscle. What's A, the most diaphragm. Diaphragm. Which of the following is incorrect about the anatomy of the respiratory tract structure? A, trachea is part of the lower respiratory tract. Epiglottis is located under the larynx. C, larynx is part of the upper respiratory tract. And D, trachea bifurcates into two bronchi. B. What's that again? B. Yeah, epiglottis, where is it located? Above the larynx. Okay. The most important respiratory muscle during expiration is A, diaphragm, B, diaphragm and intercostal muscles, C, intercostal muscles, or D, other muscles different from diaphragm? Diaphragm. 
Uh, we're talking about expiration now. Oh. In Isn't it both of them? Yeah, but it's more, uh, one is more important. So in inspiration, it's the diaphragm. In expiration, it's the intercostal muscles. Mm -hmm. And then the main component of the cytoplasmic membrane are A, phospholipids and triglycerides, B, phospholipids and proteins, C, phospholipids and cholesterol, and D, triglyceride and proteins. What are the main components of the cytoplasm? It's a fluid filled with liquid and proteins. Phospholipids and proteins. Thank you. Okay. So those are some of the um, hold on uh, quiz samples that um, we created. Let me see if I can. Um, So, um, can you see this or not? No. I can't see it. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I guess I'll just read it again. So, where is the heart located? A, superior mediastinum, B, posterior mediastinum, or C, middle mediastinum? Middle? Middle. 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 Yes. What side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood from the other parts of the body? The left atrium. What side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood? Right left. or left? Right atrium. The right. So the right, again, just imagine your heart, the right side of the heart always receives the deoxygenated blood from the body. The left side of the heart, that's the one that receives the oxygenated blood from the lungs. Pulmonary artery in the heart, A, transports oxygenated blood away from the heart to all parts of the body, or B, transports deoxygenated blood to the lungs? B. Okay. So pulmonary artery transports the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. That's from the right ventricle to the um, pulmonary valve artery. Heart valve that serves as a one-way door from the left atrium to the left ventricle is what? Mitral or tricuspid? You're in the left side of the heart. What's the valve between the atrium and the ventricle? Mitral. 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 And the other word for mitral is? Bicuspid. Thank you. Um, which of the following is not a function of cholesterol, cell molecule structure, steroid, bile, steroid and bile precursor, energy source, or precursor for vitamin D? Okay. Energy source? Yes. What is not included in the ventral body cavity? Abdom abdominal, pleural, spinal, or thoracic? The spinal? Yeah. Spinal is where in the, what cavity? The dorsal body dorsal. cavity? Dorsal, yes. The peritoneum encloses the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder.
True or false? I'm sorry. Is it false? Peritoneum, it covers the abdominal cavity. So that includes the stomach, liver, pancreas, gallbladder. Um, what is not included in the dimensions of health? A, mental, B, spiritual, C, health, D, social, E, environment, and F, emotional. Health. Health. Yes. And then what are the two systems that are involved in the body's um, um, uh, homeostasis or equilibrium? A, GI, respiratory system, B, cardiovascular and nervous system, C, nervous and endocrine system. C. Okay. Uh, that's a different lecture. Seven. Oh, I had this mixed. Okay. Um, again, the hypertonic solution, um, does it, hold on hypertonic um, which one is this uh, is it a high concentration outside the cell outside than the out than the inside of the cell or less concentration outside than inside of the cell for hypertonic high concentration inside of the cell high concentration for hypertonic, it's high concentration outside than inside of the cell. Hypotonic, it's less concentration outside than inside of the cell. And then your isotonic is the equal concentration. And then for hypertonic, would it cause um, cells to um, shrink or cells to swell or burst? Cells to shrink. Okay, and hypotonic will be the opposite. It can cause the cells to swell and burst. Uh, okay. True or false? Peritonitis is the inflammation of the peritoneal membrane. True or false? That's of the abdominal lining. That's correct. Okay. So true. Peri pericarditis is the inf inflammation of the heart or the pericardial membrane, true or false? True. Itis, you, uh, that's a, if, you've, if you've looked at your terminology, it's, it means inflammation. So you just have to look at what, um, where it, the inflammation is and then appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix true or false true true and tonsillitis is the inflammation of the tonsils true 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 okay so um, we've given i've given you two sets of practice um or yeah sample quiz questions Will do you have any sets Pardon me? Are we gonna get those sets of practice questions? Actually, those were, we just created them. Um, and that's from the um, different practice questions in the, um, in the lecture. We kind of just reworded it. Um, we haven't placed it on the, on the, um, on the Moodle. Um, do, you, okay. do, you have, do you have any questions? Or are you con are you ready to take the um, exam? I have a question. Um, I like the PowerPoint slides, you know, the lecture notes and stuff. Are those because I feel like that's where he's really testing from a lot, or that's where I noticed like there's the meat of the information, you know? Yeah. Um, I just feel like those were only available for like the first two lectures. Of Is it possible to get PowerPoints for the lectures following? Because rewatching the videos kind of takes more time. You know you, what I mean? Oh, um, so it's uh, you don't have it in Moodle uh, the from uh, the from lectures um, three and onwards. 
Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't think I saw the PowerPoints available from lectures three and onwards because I went to print everything out today. You know what um, I mean? How, is that something that every... Uh, has no, anybody... I have the lectures on the PowerPoints. I have, I have all the PowerPoints. You, you have, have all them? the... Yeah. Three, yeah, I, I, I think he would have all the lectures, the PowerPoint, the, the video, the PowerPoints, and then he has other um, resources also in Moodle. So maybe just check your Moodle again, or if there's still some problem, uh, message uh, Dr. G so he can look at your um, access in Moodle. And I think there was also a day that they had some um, uh, upgrade in Moodle. So maybe that was a time it wasn't accessible, I'm not sure. But it should be there, but I, um, I can double Double check again and then email Dr. G if anything. Any other questions or do we still do we still have everybody? Um, let me just go through. Alexis, any questions or any concerns? No, no any questions. Okay. Amanda. No, no questions. Okay. Blanca, you've mentioned that already. So double check it and then let us know if you still have a problem accessing the PowerPoints in Moodle. No, no, it's absolutely fine. I just okay. checked it. I was, okay. Yeah, no, nope, my fault. Sorry. Oh, okay. Brian, any questions? No, not right now. Okay. Chelsea? Do I still have Chelsea? I think your mic might be off again. I see you trying to come in. Hmm. I'm not hearing Chelsea. How about Denise? Any questions? Um, I guess your mics are off. Can you turn it on so you, we can hear you? I still can't hear you, Denise. Or Chelsea for both. Hmm. Can't hear you. Harleen, any question? Yeah, this lecture is going to be on the YouTube, right? This one? Mm -hmm. No. I re uh, It's recorded, but I'm not sure if he has time to put it in. Oh, okay. I'm Moni, any? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Karina? No, no questions. And uh, Madeline? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Ruby? No, I'm okay. okay. So basically, if everybody's okay um, and you don't have any questions, um, I can, we can call it an evening for you guys. Um, like Dr. G said, yeah, Chelsea, yeah, we can't hear you. Uh, I can see you trying, but um, there's no audio. But thank you. Okay, you have no questions. Um, yeah, so the tests will begin or it will open up at 9 o'clock your time. Um, you have 50 questions and 70 minutes to take them. You um, have to answer the first one to move on to the second, to the third. You're not able to go back. So my advice, read the questions carefully. Read the, the choices, the multiple choices carefully before you click. Again, sometimes you think you're familiar with it already or you know it, but things could be um, changed wording-wise. So just read it. Okay. And then you have at 9 o'clock tonight till tomorrow to do the test. But... Um, your choice, whether you do it now or um, at another time. Okay, anything else that we need to go over? No? If not, I wish you guys a good night, uh, good luck on the test, and I'll see you all next Saturday, your time. Thank okay. you. Have a good day. Thank you. Good Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night. Hope you guys you all do it on the test. Thank you.
Okay. Blanca, are you still there? Okay, you're done. Okay, 16. 